I want to start this section with a picture of some Roman glassware made in the 4th century. This is the Lysurgis cup. It's shown here illuminated from the side and as you can see it appears to be a lovely green colour. If we look at the same cup illuminated from behind, it appears to be a reddy purple sort of colour. How can we understand this behaviour? Of course we understand it using harmonic oscillation, in this case driven harmonic oscillation. What's being driven here are tiny metallic nanoparticles. The electrons in these metallic nanoparticles can resonate at the optical frequency. So if you illuminate this cup with white light, some frequencies in that white light spectrum will be resonant with the electrons that jiggle about inside the nanoparticle. In cartoon form, it might look something like this. So we have a pile of metallic nanoparticles here that will be embedded in the glass. And coming in from the side, we have white light. And the white light has all the different wavelengths and colors. Now some of the frequencies in here will resonate with the electrons in these metallic nanoparticles and make them jiggle about, which will then cause them to emit radiation. In this case, if the resonant frequency of these electrons in these nanoparticles was green, they will emit the green light. The green light is now missing because it's being scattered everywhere, and the remaining light that goes through the nanoparticles will be the color that is uh, white light minus the green. And so with this simple cartoon and this model, we now have some idea of where this two-coloured glass comes from. This two-coloured effect, by the way, is also known as dichroism. And the model is really pretty simple. It's just based on driven harmonic oscillation. Here are some microscope images of individual metallic nanoparticles, in this case silver nanoparticles. And as you can see, different particles have uh, different colours. They're all illuminated with white light. Now depending on the size of the particle, they are resonant at different frequencies. In the homework question this week, we'll do some electrodynamics and calculate the resonant frequency of a sheet of metal. When you do this calculation in the homework, you'll get an answer which will be in the ultraviolet rather than the visible. The difference is that in the homework question we're considering a big sheet of metal, whereas here we have little approximately spherical particles and that reduces the resonant frequency. Nevertheless, the principle is the same, that we are driving electrons in a metal to resonate, and in this case we're driving them with electromagnetic waves. So with that, we'll leave behind nanoparticles and go on and think about uh, driven harmonic oscillation with damping, and we'll go back to our spring and mass system Realizing, however, that although we're using springs and masses, this behavior is universal and can be used to describe any damped-driven system.